It's election season. Three candidates have already released their manifestos, a proposal of how they intend to govern and ensure growth of this country. We have seen the Great Transformational Plan, the For Jobs and Business Plan, and the NDC's Reset Ghana Manifesto. All of them promising a better Ghana. The latter, an ambitious manifesto focused on economic revival, job creation, and the introduction of the 24-hour economy. It outlines a comprehensive strategy to address significant economic challenges Ghana currently faces, including high inflation, currency depreciation and unemployment. Central to their plan is the promise of a national economic dialogue and a series of targeted interventions aimed at stabilizing the city and rationalizing taxes. Why do they believe their proposal is superior? Why must you give them another chance? Today, I am joined by a former Minister of Finance to delve into these economic strategies. We will discuss the feasibility of the NDC's proposed measures, how they plan to fund and implement these initiatives, and what this could mean for Ghana's economic future. I am Kemeni Amano, and today on Hot Issues, I sit with Seth Tekwe. Honorable, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. The difficulty <coughs> the NDC will meet, should it win the December 7th election, is it's costing the country 761 billion uh, cities. Uh, that is what the, you know, the finance minister says our current debt stock is, uh, the value of the current debt stock, 761 billion cities. So, of course, it sounds like uh, what you met in 2012 is just a fraction of the situation uh, uh, today. So, what in your proposal, uh, what, what, what in your manifesto are the proposals to deal with uh, the current situation at hand? Well, let me, let me say that we shouldn't have been in that position because most of what I'm describing, we did a research. The major research that we did was when uh, uh, the commercial oil started coming in, we decided that, look, let's use oil in a different way you know, from what we had done with gold, with cocoa, and, you know, <coughs> diamond, bauxite, mm -hmm. you know. So we went to, we passed a law, you know, if I may just summarize it, we passed a law that says that, what, what are our main headaches, right? The main headache is death. We had just come out of hippie, right? So we said, it's because we were not paying our debt regularly. That's why we went, you know, hippie. And luckily for us, our debt was forgiven. Today, it's suspended. That's a warning. You know, for us, you may not be third time lucky. Mm -hmm. So we set up the sinking fund so that if you are going to borrow and be on the market, mm -hmm. and you can, you, borrowing is not necessarily a bad word if you can manage it. It's like a household. You borrow to take your kids to school. You borrow to, to buy furniture when, when you start life. You borrow to buy TV. You borrow to buy the, what is domestic consumable or capital mm -hmm. goods. And then if you are doing well, you take a mortgage to this is the mortgage is available. Those days you buy you 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 get you borrow to buy blocks, you buy, buy this and at a point you buy cement roofing sheets. Sometimes they say you build a your house in a room. Right. right? Yeah. So um if you take a mortgage, you know, uh, that's because your salary may not be enough to for you to build immediately. But over a period of fifteen years your salary, you know, would be enough, you know, uh -huh. to pay. It's the same. If you want to do a big dam, Bagri Dam, which would be what the, uh, you know, the other dam, not Bagri is the, upper, is the uh, Burkina Faso one, uh, to stop the spillage, block it so that it doesn't hurt. If you want to do big projects, you know, for many years we couldn't expand Terminal 1 and 2. We managed to, to refurbish Terminal 2 and then put up Terminal 3. All those things, you know, use, even if you have the capability, Borrowing means that you accelerate the construction right. and then you pay the loan over time. You know, so again, but, I'll but give you it, another But example. if you come into office, you're going to be inheriting we'll bring that. It, yeah, but we're bringing back the sinking fund. You, you know, we got a solution fund. for not going hippie again. Mm. It was a debt repayment fund. Okay. You know, which mm -hmm. was coming out of, <clears throat> you know, the oil revenues, which was new to the economy. Mm -hmm. The solution... Again, a second example 
I was talking about the problems that beset the economy. Right. Debt, as a hip peak, is the same thing we are facing now. But we know that when we did, sing, when we did the sinking fund, mm -hmm. we know from our experience that it worked. Okay. Because at the time we started the sinking fund in 2014, we were three years away from the first sovereign bond, 750 million US dollars. We hadn't put any money aside. So we started putting money aside. And we, before we left office, we used 350 million, you know, to start paying it off. We left approximately 350, it's about 336 or something. And then we left, <coughs> we took the borrowing we did for 2015, backed by the World Bank, guarantee. The purpose was to, part of the debt that we did, mm -hmm. the Doomso debt, the whatever, we added it to the, uh, to 200 million of the sovereign bond and stretch it over a period of 15 years so that since we have a sinking fund, we can be paying, you know, gradually over time and stop the habit of borrowing and waiting, you know. And then there was 200, 250 million, sorry, 250 million left. The MPP was the one who settled the last debt. Okay. Using that money. Your sinking fund. Your sinking fund. But, but, but you, won't, you won't be coming to meet a sinking fund. No, it's depleted. I, indeed. So, so <clears> then, <throat> you have uh, 761 billion CD debt on your hand. We know that some of our external debts will have to be paid from 2026. You're coming into 2025. You tell us the economy is broken. Where would you... I'm telling you now. I'm saying that, you know, so um, hopefully... Mm. Remember, we left two additional oil fields, so three oil fields. Okay. And it wasn't used. We did it with one field. So whatever is coming out of the two, in addition to the one, mm -hmm. we'll start putting something aside. Yeah, so, so what I wanted to understand is and know, the, the imme oilfields. immediacy that could come with that. Are you able to you know, immediately get funds going into the sinking funds? Well, remember you said 2026. You said 2026 mm -hmm. because there's a respite in 2025. Okay. So you, you know, think so that, that will be a working period? Yes, it's a working period. Okay. And it's a period for you to give an indication to the markets that you want to change your behavior, right, which is to bring back the sinking fund. Uh -huh. And even if it's a penny, you know, that we can put into it, despite our arrears and everything, that's a reset. <laughs> we are doing something, so we are doing the reset. Uh -huh. To tell, you know, they change the law, tighten the law, you know, to commit us to the payment, and hopefully... Ghanaians will now back us because mm -hmm. it worked. Oh. You see, the point is that we are pointing to something that worked, mm -hmm. as I was explaining to you, right. and we stopped it. Oh, oh, what is <coughs> the NDC's plan to make the country attractive again as far as the money market is concerned? Manage the economy well. Mm -hmm. So if I may give you, I'd like to give you specific examples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, on the onset somewhere... Um, on the onset, yes, on the onset of the um, Professor Mills administration, we inherited a huge, you know, um, arrears mm -hmm. that were due to civil servants, uh, single spy, right? Right. It's a big problem. It was a big problem. You know, it. We initially we were borrowing to pay, then we met labor, other interest groups, the public, you know, at home. Then mm -hmm. we decided that look, let's have a dialogue because. It's not sustainable to be borrowing, you know, to pay salaries. So we deferred. <coughs> we continue to pay the new salary scale, but we deferred the arrears mm -hmm. to be paid gradually so that we can use revenue to pay instead of um, using borrowing, you know, to be paying for basically uh, recurrent expenditure or consumption, if you like. Uh, we also had what became known as Doomso. Mm -hmm. When the pipeline for Nigeria was broken and we were not getting gas, we were, no, <coughs> VRA was borrowing, you know, to, to supply, you know, to buy crude so that they could generate the power. It's un, it was unsustainable. Uh, we had to find ways and means of correcting all of this. Eventually, right. we ended up in the fund program. But we found, why is in the fund program? Uh, a bit unusual. We managed to do big projects like Terminal 3, like the um, uh, Thermoport expansion, mm -hmm. got some monies which are still in the pipeline after eight years, the railway line, mm -hmm. you know, the bridge over, the third bridge over the southern Volta mm -hmm. and those. Uh, so that's what the research means. One of the things <coughs> that Ghanaians will continue to ask is how resetting the 
your agenda to reset, your plan to reset. So I'm giving you specific will, examples. Will, will, will better their lives. I mean, what would you say to them? Oh, uh, just as the realization that if you didn't pay your debt, right, just as the realization that if you didn't pay your debt, you'll be locked out of the market. Mm. And it's no different from you borrowing. My favorite example, you know, which applies to my life is, right. you know, our parents, majority of our parents borrow to take us to school. The majority. Mm -hmm. It's school fees. We're talking about school fees. But they want you to be better than they were. And they put money aside or they'll be paying. Otherwise, the following semester, you can't go to school. Mm. Right? So it's the same discipline that we need. So we hope that by giving the examples of we setting money aside to pay the first sovereign board issued by uh, President Kufo, part of which was used mm. by the MPP and stopping it, you know, the part of the tightening and the restructuring of expenditure is to say, we are not saying that we have to restructure expenditure so that we put everything for consumption. No, we are saying that we have to restructure, tighten our belts so that we can bring back, you know, the, uh, <coughs> the sinking fund, right? And if you are able to do that consistently, you can face 2026 and meet the creditors and say, hey, we've gone to parliament, we've tightened, mm. with whatever, can you give us a little more respite, which is what we did you know, with the World Bank bond. Mm. While we're you on know, the subject yeah. of creditors, how about we talk about the IMF and the plans that you have? Um, how would you situate that in the program we are currently on? It's part of what we're talking about. Remember that at the time we set up the sinking fund, it wasn't an IMF requirement. We were in an IMF. Mm -hmm. We said that 2014, 2015, we were in the IMF program, but we continued. <laughs> to set the money aside. And the payments that I was talking about were made while we were in the IMF program. IMF program, we were in the IMF program mm -hmm. when we took our, when we took the forex that is flowing to the country, right? It was a difficult period, yes. But we took part of that again, another scheme, mm -hmm. put it aside to use it to guarantee instead of the taxpayer, right? And that's the money that built Terminal 3. We were in the IMF program when we took the money that was coming into the budget. Right, for consumption, which was being used for consumption mm -hmm. from Thermoport, and we ring fenced it, and that's what we use. Otherwise, the IMF will say, Hey, you can't borrow for Terminal 3, you can't borrow for, uh, oh, so, for so airport. I, I mean, I'm not, not, just, uh, mm -hmm. you, I don't know, you're an IMF program, right? And the essence of borrowing today, it may be valuable, it may be whatever, but you had gone to borrow before, you didn't pay. But by putting that money aside and demonstrating that the escrows were working, because remember, the experience was from using the money from oil to do the pipelines, you know, that is giving us gas, using that same money to do a trouble that gives us gas. Mm -hmm. So we had a record to point to that, yeah, we're an IMF program, but we've been putting money aside. So being an IMF program, as well, President but, Mamas, Yeah, but what, I, what I'm pointing <coughs> to is that this time you are not the one in the IMF program but we are to going be to pointing. It, God yes, willing. yes, I understand. Yes. But you, you are not the one in the program at the moment. So yes. there was no pointing to A, B, or C that you could do. You're coming in uh, with a high debt stock. The IMF is already trying to squeeze you to ensure that your expenditure is low and you're able to mobilize revenue. And so your plan which will also need money by itself, how would that be situated in the bid uh, or the program's agenda to also ensure that you don't spend overspent? I'm saying that that agenda, mm. we have gone through it before. We were in an IMF program. But when is it the did, same? Oh, it's basically the structures are the same. For example, what is the IMF saying? The IMF is saying that you, know, you need to raise revenue, mm -hmm. right? You need to improve your revenue generation, mm -hmm. right? What are they asking us to do? They're asking us to, I'm sure you've heard about ITAS, to serve ITAS. ITAS was phase two of ICOMS, which was called West Blue. And it was stopped for seven years. So we have the experience of doing the customs end. So we we'll quickly go to the World Bank, which were the main financiers, take a soft loan, mm. you know, and that was what will bring, stabilize the domestic revenue mobilization. It's something that we we're going to do is something which it was only stopped. Right. So, so, yeah. so I mean, so when your manifesto says that you would have <coughs> uh, conversations with the IMF regarding Precisely. taking a second look at the program, what exactly do you want to discuss with That's the IMF? One, no, it's some are in the program already. The ones that we were doing that were in the program, the IMF has 
The IMF is, is like a chameleon, you know. Okay. <laughs> um, what we know the IMF for is what you are talking about. Oh, is it touching your belt and uh -huh. all that? No. But the IMF, by the way, in the interest of disclosure, I worked at the IMF. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> uh, yes, so um, I said the IMF was, we had an IMF program. Well, we told the IMF that we are going to set oil money aside. And at the same time, we achieve a deficit within the program limits. And we did 6.1. For 20, mm -hmm. you know, 16, we came down from 2015 to, by the time we were living, it was 6.1. And you are looking to present that same record to the IMF and when more. you re-engage. And better. And better. Yes. Okay. Let's look at some of the things that the NDC is proposing, uh, a, you know, to do in order to tackle the high cost of living. Yeah. Um, I think one of them is energy on fuel price. Um, you have talked about the uh, removal of, of certain taxes. Um Talk to us about these things, uh, particularly also relating to the uh, price stabilization <coughs> and recovery levy. Price stabilization, recovery levy, and all those levies were actually the babies for ESLA. <laughs> so we talk about ESLA. And so we went in, you know, to impose a tax at the time crude oil prices were falling. So because the crude oil prices were falling, we put a little something on top, you know, so it was falling to about, remember for $99, falling to about thirty-five, forty. So if you wanted to adjust the pump price, you know, you would have adjusted it at thirty-five, forty, mm -hmm. right? Then we added maybe five. So we put it at 50 because after it's coming down. And we explained to Ghanaians that, look, the energy sector is critical to us, IPPs, because of doing so. We couldn't pay, you know, for the gas. We couldn't do some of these things. VRA had borrowed and all that. So we did zoom, zoom so, mm -hmm. you know, which was to, re to use the word, reset the energy, you know, sector, you know, again. Um, it's a city to an extent because from a drought of power, we had excess power, right? Mm -hmm. instead I mean, of, right instead before of, you left in 2016, exactly. yes. But you know what was said of the... Power, they said we left power which we couldn't use. Right. You remember? I, I do. Yeah, so that is short vision in the sense that somebody gives you power coming out of doing so, and you are saying it's bad. It's a mm. bad policy as a result of which we are where we are today. Okay. So, so I'm saying that this is one example mm -hmm. of focusing on the energy sector. The ESLA that was to be used to have paid the IPPs, you know, was collateralized. That collateralized loan, mm -hmm. which would have paid the IPPs, was diverted heaven knows where. Okay. And today, the collateralized loan is part of the debt default. So we'll come back again and then discuss the issue of if your you price, X-Fund price, right? If, no, if you if, are buffers, yes. If you are put the uh, stabilization no, level. No, Honorable, let's take a break now. <laughs> when we come back, okay. we'll, we'll, take a, we'll take a dig at that discussion. Don't go away. Welcome back. Today I'm sitting with former finance minister, Seth Tekwe. Thank you so much for your patience and talking to Very us. Welcome. But we've been talking <coughs> about the fuel price and, you know, I need a bit more information on that. The ex pump price, the, the price buildup we know has a lot of taxes. Um, you're saying that, well, you will apply the PSRL, also create buffers in the economy so that, you know. It that was the purpose of the PR, PSR. P yes, indeed. Yes. That so, was the purpose anyway. Uh, right. So I'm saying that. <laughs> I, even if, and I want you to, you know, address directly what you will do uh, to ensure that fuel is cheaper for the Ghanaian people. Because even if we apply to this, we know that you, it, it won't be as cheap as we want it, would it? It won't be, but it won't be as worse as it would have been. It may not be, it may not be as best as we would wish, mm -hmm. but it will also not be as worse as it would have been. Why, why can't we take some, some of the other taxes and margins and, off? Yeah, the only way you can take those ones is, of course, we said we are going to take some of them off. COVID is over. Yes. So why do you continue to but have COVID? But COVID is, is you know, it's small. No, they are important. Let me tell you why, you know, and then I can come back to this. They are important because we used to have two levies which had very specific purposes. We call the fiscal stabilization levy or national stabilization levy. What's in the name? Right? We all agree. Mm -hmm. That was imposed 
on when we are in a crisis and businesses that may during COVID, everybody was on phone, all right, because we were locked down. So it means that a certain sector of the economy mm -hmm. was making money, right? So we say those that are making money during that period and they are making profit, not just because, you know, pay 5% of your profit mm -hmm. to help us get out of it. And then we impose another temporary levy, import, you know, duty levy. Right. To complement the income tax one, to help us. That's the revenue end. So that when you are cutting expenditure, you also have, you are generating revenue. So that you are not depending on only one tool. This is something that has been done for Rolling Star. The unique thing about them is that immediately your IMF program ends and you have brought the economy, they go away. You see why we shouldn't be keeping a COVID levy? Mm. Mpox is coming. Mm -hmm. Or oh, it's here with us. God willing. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. The vaccines may come early. If you put the COVID levy away when COVID is over, you can explain to the public that we have another levy. Let's bring impulse levy. So that even in anticipation, right? So that if it's just a SARS, right? So Ebola SARS. Right. Right. So okay. I'm saying that you cannot run an economy for three years, four years, mm -hmm. where one crisis or the other. Just as you cannot have your baby, you know, no coughing, mm. sneezing, or whatever. So, uh, so I mean, uh, yes. at, at this point, I take it... So, I'm saying that the buffers uh -huh. are the important solution. And what I'm trying to demonstrate is that we applied them, and it worked. So, I'm telling the public that... Absol absolutely, uh -huh. I understand. Because even the P PSRL, I know that this current administration applied part of it, uh, uh, you know, at some point. I'm saying that all I'm saying is that, yes, they may have, but they could have done more, because there are three or... You know, with three oil fields and with all of that, they could have done better. That's the point I'm making. Right. We shouldn't have been where we are. Right. Yeah. So I, I, if, if we could move on, uh, you know, slightly from the PSRL, there are those who have said that if indeed we really want our fuel prices to go down, one of the things we would have to consider is making tour work. Is there a plan for that? Yes. Before we left, there was a plan. And that, you know, remember <clears throat> at a point in time, President Mahama put bust and tour mm -hmm. under one management. Because if tour should produce, you are not producing, you know, for immediate consumption only. You are producing, just as what I said, buying the external stock. That's why bus was built with the pipelines and everything. So when the price is low or when Tema, you know, oil refinery produces, you mm -hmm. store part of it. That's what strategic stock. The United States does it. South Africa does it. Many countries do it. So in a period when prices go up mm -hmm. or there's fighting in the Middle East or whatever, at least you have some strategic stock which you can rely on. Okay, but are, and are the we funding not... and the money for that is the you know, PR and SR which we spoke about. Are, are, are we not a net importer of crude? Whatever it is, you are going to consume crude. Right, so, so, so what I'm trying to explain is... We were gross... We, no. the, plan, the plan to... Okay, minute, let, me, let me explain. You have moved from being... A gross importer of crude with God's help. Mm -hmm. And you have now become net, no gross. Mm -hmm. So what prevents you from using part of the blessing? You know, to do, it's like, you know, yeah, you may be poor. Or you may be just starting life. But if you have a salary raise, it, it cushions you. You know, and so if you have a salary raise and all you do is to take the money to buy a nice, you know, whatever, and you don't think about you know, maybe changing the furniture, a little look, you know, and whatever, in anticipation of maybe your marriage or something, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that same principle applies. I mean, but, but, but apply what I was headed at is that yes, okay. I remember that during your time in office, uh, when conversations about tour came up, well, we were told that the oil we have could not be refined at all. And, and that is <coughs> why the situation was the way it was. Today we have a, a private refinery. We also adjacent tour, really. Um, when you tell me that you had a plan before, why are we exchanging gold for the for the for, for no, 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 hang on. We'll talk about gold for oil, right? We'll talk about gold for oil. But right now, I want to understand what the plan is really to ensure that we don't have to ship our crude outside before it comes to tour. Yes, there was there was a plan actually 
just as has been done, let's see, this private one. But there was a, that's what I was saying, that at the point, the management of Tor and Boss were put together in anticipation of a rehabilitation with a mm. private partner right. to come and fix, you know, yes. And I'm saying that part of our experience is that whilst we were gross importer, mm -hmm. now we are net importer. So if we are going to move gradually to a net exporter, mm -hmm. then you must learn to also use part of the that crude and, in, and imported, you know, crude. Right. After all, crude is cheap in Nigeria, next door. So what prevents you from filling your tanks and things so that you can process and, and, and have a storage? So that the event of, you know, all those right. crises, you can fall on it. So I'm saying that that's why we had the stream policy. So is this plan still on the table? It's on the table. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I want us to look at electricity now. Uh, we, we've been tackling high tariff as against the... Uh, you know, the retailer's bid to ensure that it's able to pay its bid. What is the NDC's plan for the Ghanaian people when it comes to electricity tariff? Hopefully we can bring back. You know, we had a, you know, we had a plan. Mm -hmm. You know, bring the gas, you know, on shore, mm -hmm. right? Set up what we call the waterfall. The waterfall is not a new word, right? Set up the waterfall, and that's MCC who has gone. They were to provide the financing for ECG. Right, to for prepaid meters for better management of the downstream because the downstream ability to collect, right, means that you will be unable to pay mm -hmm. the upstream, the upstream guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea was, you know, with the MCC facility, the downstream will be restructured, including private sector participation. That's why we are the PSP, private sector participation, so that, for example, if as President Mahama has said. I, I'm sure you've heard him say, if a segment of Eastern region where I come from will be given to, you know, an, a, you know, a private operator a, by the, you know, power, you know, which is coming from a gas processing plant and from, you know, all of those things going into Greco, by the power, supplied, you know, which is to be supplied to a segment and collect. Right. right? And that's where the prepaid meters idea came. So this is also going to cost you money? To do? Yes, everything costs money. Okay, I understand. Yes. Just put a pen That's in what I'm saying that we started implementing it. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're asking the question, the real question is why was it stopped? Well, well, why was all this program that was backed by the World Bank, program that was backed by MCC? You know, the benefits of MCC, we all, we all know the highway. I mean, do you, do you know why it was stopped? Otherwise, we would have to wait for the current administration to answer that. Oh, okay. maybe when, after the manifesto, when you have a... There yeah, are reps sitting here. You perhaps asking, we, perhaps you know, we, we could do that. Yes. But another, we all know. Another, we all know why MCC left. In, in the electricity subsector, you will be facing you know, a dead stock of its own. Uh, the IPPs on one hand. At this point, we can't even keep a, you know, a tab on how much is owed now because personally I have lost count. Um, what, what do you intend to do about the debts in, in that... See, you see, I always like to tell Ghanaians what we did, <laughs> which was stopped. <laughs> you know, so I know it's prolonging the interview a bit, but then what did we do? Mm -hmm. You know, I told you that we had the IPP debt, we had all those debts and whatever. We brought in Esla. Let your producers Google for you. I know, but yeah. you see, that's what I'm asking, because you don't have Esla now. But why don't we have Esla? It, it, we have Esla. You are paying you know, for Esla. We are, we are paying, but is the money there? Yeah, the money that's... Yeah, but that is the, that's the, the issue. The money is not so applied we, to the sector. We will manage Esla better. That's it. The point that we were managing Esla better. But it won't happen immediately. That's, that's what I'm trying to understand. I mean, when, when, or, when or if... That is, why those, NDC, that is why those who dismantled it. That is why people, those who had, who said that they had spent... And it was linked to the banking sector crisis. We don't have much time to do. Yes. So I'm saying that Esla was supposed to pay all the IPPs. It was a, there was even a road But, but today it's been mortgaged. No, excuse me. It, yeah, it's been mortgaged. So the question is, why was it mortgaged? So we'll try and get the mortgage out. Right. Yes. So okay. the point we are making is that we'll try and get the mortgage out. But Ghanaians should understand that the problem we are facing, including the Esla, which was collateralized, should not have happened at all. Because let me give you the numbers. As at two years ago, you know, the new report that the sun is, is mm -hmm. going to come out. Nearly 36 billion, I'm saying billion, Ghana cities have come in physical cash from Esla, which me and you are paying. Mm -hmm. 
And it's anticipated that by 2026, Tesla will bring in 60 billion Ghana cities plus. I think it's 66 billion or so. Mm -hmm. If all the, 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 the challenges we had and the borrowing and everything cost us 25 billion, 30 billion, why didn't we use that money to pay the IPPs? Why is it that today the IPPs who were to benefit from it, they are being old? You get my point? Mm -hmm. Why are they being old? And why has it become a, you know, a challenge now and a challenge for the next administration? And I'm saying that when we were getting the ESLA revenue, which they said was a nuisance tax, we started to settle VRA debt mm -hmm. from doing so. Linked, because VRA is critical for power. The generation right. together with, now we also have, uh, you know, the gas. Right, so you see the link. That's right. why it's important for Ghanaians to understand that we have the way with that. There are things we did before, right? And we are not saying the challenge is, is larger. It has been added, mm -hmm. but then challenges are there to be faced. Absolutely. If you are, yes. uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, the NPP, on the other hand, says that what it would do for business in order to expand the sector is also that it would reduce commercial consumers to match domestic consumers so that we all pay the same rates. It's a very old policy. It's not a new policy. It's a very old policy. Mm. And it is like the banking sector. Do you do a big bank, right? And collapse banks mm. to the detriment of the economy, or do you do a gradualist approach, knowing very well that if you bring down the bank, right, it's not just the owner which will suffer. Your deposit there is like it was to suffer. Is, you are is it, is a, it a sound policy at this time in you know for the economy? Well, we would evaluate because remember we don't know all the story. If the IMF yeah, come, we wouldn't have known all the story. Indeed. So we don't know all the story. Last but time. what we know, we have some information. Mm. And based on that, we are saying the energy sector is going to be a top priority. I, I, I want to talk about revenue mobilization uh, because, uh, as you said, everything costs money. Yes. Uh, there's nothing that does not cost money. So um, <coughs> you, we have mentioned a few taxes here and there. They already have you know, things they will be tackling. But generally, how do you plan to raise money for the economy? One. We are going to rationalize the tax regime. You heard President Mama use that word. Why are we going to rationalize the tax regime? Throw back to VAT and Kumi Preku. Right? Many of the taxes that the VAT replaced have been reintroduced in the name of levies. Mm. From betting to all. They are consumption tax. You can just tax them one with one tax. You don't have to bring in levy upon levy upon mm -hmm. levy you know, 20 plus, right? I'm saying that we've gone through the period when, and that is because the pillars of our revenue system are four. The pillars of our revenue system are four. <coughs> One, VAT, which is a tax on consumption. For, poor, for, for the low income, let me not say, poor, for the low income people mm -hmm. and for necessities, education, health, foodstuffs, and the rest are exempted from it. All of us benefit. It benefits the low income more, whose proportion of income for food is much higher. Two, income tax is the second pillar, which is corporate income tax and personal income tax. Three, import duty. Unlike the first two, mm -hmm. import duty, if you don't import, you don't pay. If you don't consume an item that is imported, you don't pay. If all you eat is local food, and you don't, once in a while you buy thin food or something which is imported. So, those, that's a, you know, so that one discriminates mm -hmm. and it protects our local industry because import duty is not on domestic. There's no equivalent. That's right. Then the last one is excise, which is a punitive tax. Petroleum, alcohol, tobacco, right? Mm. These are the pillars. All right. So when you bring in other levies, they're only mimicking this for. Mm. So what you and it makes it difficult. What you plan to do is to expand what to we rationalize. Have. The rationalization has been done twice already. First, under ERP SAP. Mm -hmm. Second, when Professor Mills came in and we set up GRA and all those things, we did another rationalization. Mm -hmm. If you take the VAT, there was a flat rate, there was this and that. Immediately, we left office, they were reintroduced. And the reason we have to change them, in mm -hmm. fact, the vice president himself said it. He said, all those levies, and I also have the calculation. They don't give us 0.5%. Mm. 
Very well. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, so we rationalize uh -huh. to enable us to focus on the pillars. W will this so rationalization be enough to make up for the shortfall you would experience from the removal of you know, no, you, levies you, and taxes? It's that, never the case. Mm -hmm. It's never the case that you use in fiscal management, you use one, two. But we are saying that whilst we are trimming expenditure, mm -hmm. right, those who are not paying their tax, mm -hmm. we must find a way of also going after them. Mm -hmm. And then those who need the benefits of the tax system must get there. For example, businesses where, who are no consumers and they buy materials to this leather, you know, to, and they produce cell phones, right? They are not the consumer, so they must be given input as credit. And you block it. NHIL get fund, they used to be VAT. So we bring it in fairness to the business, mm. right? So I'm saying you need a revenue policy, you need an expenditure policy, and you need a debt policy. Your whole fiscal so, arsenal, what we have been discussing, uh -huh. must be brought to bear. Absolutely. So yeah. when that is brought to bear, all those things that you have mentioned have been brought to bear, do we know how much letting go or parting ways with the levies and taxes <coughs> you have allow, outlined will cost us? We know where we want to get to. Okay. You know, and it's in the IMF program. Okay. And it's, it's well known that sub-Saharan Africa, to manage their economy, as efficiently as possible, must have a tax to GDP. Are, are you saying it won't be problematic to part ways with these levies at the current state of the economy? Oh, they are rather blocking the efficient, you know, implementation of the of the system, like COVID, as we said. Mm. So if you rationalize, COVID is no more. Mm. So if another calamity comes, then you can explain to you know when COVID came, you know we introduced it. Now there's another problem. We introduce it, but we let go. But if you don't let go, the public won't believe you. Mm. Yes. I, I want to talk about import duties, which you brought up. Uh, in the manifesto, we talk, you talked about uh, you know, removing import duties for agric and health equipment and vehicles. Uh, but you know, for individuals and businesses alike who have continued to complain about how difficult and expensive it is to bring certain things into the country, like uh, you know, cars, importation of cars, what is in there for them? Part of that is a resolution of the exchange rate problem. You know, because when you bring a car, the price of a seat in dollar may not have changed. Mm -hmm. Right? It may not have changed. So if I bring in, a, let's say, this item and it's $100, right? If, I, if the exchange rate is 10, it will be multiplied by 10, and then the duty will be calculated. So it's 1,000. Mm -hmm. If the exchange rate changes to 15, this same item at $100 becomes 1,500. You see what I'm saying? That it takes you to look at the whole economy. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the primary prob problems of imports being the exchange rate. So it means we have to stabilize, you know, the forex. And that is why for the non-traditional export sector to complement, as we have been saying all the time, we establish the Zimbabwe. Indeed. You know, so that it can also bring in, you know, forex to stabilize the economy, to help cocoa, gold, and the rest. Today, Coco is only really, you know, able to protect. I, I, and I want to talk about the exchange rates and the cocoa industry you've just brought up when we return. Don't go away. Yeah. Thank you so much for staying with us here on Hot Tissues. I'm still here with former finance minister, Seth Tekwe. Honorable, you brought up the exchange rates and inflation earlier, and I want us to look at it. One of the things that you said in your manifesto is that you plan to investigate the gold for oil program. Why? Well, I think President Mama gave, you know, the reason. The reason being that, you know, it's not as transparent as it ought to be. Mm. You know, because the, the point is that, look, we are exchanging gold, you know, for, for oil. Right, we could have continued selling the gold. Right, this, the gold market has all collapsed. In actual fact, gold prices are rather higher. Mm -hmm. So we could have continued selling the gold and use the forex. But, you know, but I don't, think, I don't get the impression you want to cancel it. You just want to investigate it. I know if it's not fit for purpose, why don't you just do away with it? You, you will cancel it if it's not because fit you have for institutions. Purpose. You have mm. you know precious minerals which are set up. To but is it such a bad minerals. idea? Uh, they tell us mm. that it is helping us with the exchange rate. And I'm saying that, you know, Kevin, what's the difference, you know, between selling the gold in the international market, mm -hmm. having your money to import the crude? Is this the diversionary tactics or what? 
And that's why I'm saying that the gold market has not collapsed. So what's the difference between selling the gold as you normally do? You are biased. Ghana's gold is special. Everybody knows it. So sell the gold, get the money, and buy the class you are doing, and put the money in the reserves. <laughs> you know, not to a private individual. So, right. in the so, so I think the cycle, so in the, city. the cycle is, while we, we have our CDs here, we have our gold also here, so we we'll use our CDs to buy the gold. That's butter. If any country, that's butter. That's what our forefathers do. Uh. <laughs> you know, when they, you know, you know, the wise and things, it's butter. I have salt, you have, you know, cloth, we exchange it. Mm. You bring cloth, I mean, yeah, that's butter. You don't think it's impacting the I economy I don't at know this any, point in I don't know any economy which has grown on butter. Okay. I don't know any economy which has grown on butter. It's usually when an economy is shattered, like war torn and whatever, and you know, because of a war you are unable to do this, then you can exchange, you know, you know, food for food or you, product for product. You plan to look at the uh, mo monetary policy uh, rates, uh, you know, as part of your uh, targeting of, uh, as, as part of your um, efforts to. Uh, curb the uh, the exchange rate situation that we experience at the moment. I prefer to put it that given the need for the independence of the central bank, I prefer to put it in another way. There will be less or no interference with the work of the central bank. Okay, so, so then what is the plan really to ensure that the exchange rate does not go out of the roof than it already is? Don't use the bank to finance the deficit. Raise your own revenue to finance the deficit. It's unprecedented in our history for the central bank, you know, to deplete their reserves and the nation's reserves, oh. right? To, because, you know, the fiscal, the well, government cannot raise revenue. Right now, they tell us there is recovery. They say we have 3.1. But the harm has been uh, done already. Imports, no, the harm, has been, the harm has been done already when they shouldn't, it's, it's something that shouldn't have happened. Where will you situate the role of the 24 hour economy in, in the bulk of the conversation we've had today? Where would it sit? It will sit in every sector of the economy. Okay. And we have strategic plans. The budget is based on strategic plans. And so every sector, road sector, should contractors work in the night and stop moving about caterpillars mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things during the day. That is part of the strategy to, to implement. Okay. Do we make sure that the... Let's begin with what is already happening. Right. Then we can talk about even new... Do we... You know, which Ministry of Health nurses have to go, night duty, night shifts and whatever, it's not well done. Mm -hmm. And you can go down. People say that, you know, my village and my town and whatever. There are centers also mm -hmm. in other places, right? Uh, my own Somalia, where you get to where we used to call it, it never sleeps or whatever. Just fix, you know, the, you know, the street lights the street and lights. the lights and, you know, so that at least the... Those who harass them in the night, steal their things, yeah. they run yeah. into the bush and all those sort of things. So we are, it, is, it is making the economy efficient. So when you ask me how every sector every must address sector. itself. Right. Yes. Uh, so, so then, uh, you know, people keep asking whether or not the bedrock or framework for a 24-hour economy already exists or we are building from scratch. They do exist. It's, it's, it's a Ms. Mahama mm -hmm. and going back, in fairness, to the Rawlings administration that you know, produce a strategic planning framework. Mm -hmm. And that is what NDPC does. Mm -hmm. You know, so you incorporate, you know, the idea is to make the sectors efficient. You incorporate the idea into your, you know, your, your medium-term plan, into mm -hmm. your strategic plan for the ministries and everything. And let every ministry respond, you know, with well, this version, yes. Indeed. I, I apologize, I'm there used to be this. No, it's okay. There used to be a time, for example, when I remember very well, uh, I believe during the, from the, across from my champion to the, you know, when things were very, you know, cargo used to move in the night because mm -hmm. there were so much accidents and the rest, mm -hmm. right? But make it, you know, position the I police see. and things to make sure that there's no highway robbery, patrolling, and, you know, and the rest. So you see two sectors brought together to I, make... I, know, I want us to quickly touch on the banking sector crisis, then we'll look at the cocoa industry. Um, we know that the... Uh, former <coughs> president and your flag bearer has indicated and also in the manifesto that you will look again at the bank's banking sector cri uh, crisis for two things. You audit the process of the closures and then you would also return those that were wrongfully, uh, you know, closed. Uh, so I'll ask the question in two parts. In looking again at the process of uh, the closures and consolidation, what are you 
uh, expecting the outcome to be. And finally, perhaps we should go with that first. We don't prejudge outcomes. You know something has gone wrong. Mm. You know, because if I sit here and I prejudge the outcome. Well, what, 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 has, what has gone wrong? That's what I'm trying to get to start with. Well, many uh, depositors have lost their, their money. Mm. You know, some people have lost their banks and they have a grievance and they yeah. say we're not treated fairly. You know, on the other hand, that the flip side of that is that there were governors and other issues, but, and that is why. But there are those so those are the things that you are going to investigate. Right, but there so are those that we who don't, think... So that we learn lessons from it. Absolutely. Yes. There are those who think that, really, uh, the banking sector crisis, the NDC already knew about it because they began, uh, you know, sometime 2015. Of course, we did the audit. Mm -hmm. We did the audit. And then, then you recapitalized the NDC, banks? NDC, no. The two things are different. Okay. That's the, one of the roles of a central bank, right, is to support, you know, banks with liquidity, especially with some, you know, when they have a crisis, so that they don't collapse. Because the collapse is a very, it's a routine function of the, right. So, yes, the banks were giving support. The issue is that, which we didn't get to say, is that when it was, the report was examined and the rest, they said some of the owners had misapplied, you know, those funds. They didn't mm. use them for the purpose. You know, then I had a similar issue. So, so while you, you as a government has shown goodwill, the banks, them, some of the banks themselves, according to the audited reports that were produced under this administration, misapplied the funds. And both administrations. I told you that we right. started part of the audit. And mm -hmm. they continued, yes. So that's, yes, that is what they said. Okay. So, but those who were affected, I also giving you a different story. So what does a leader do? He only establishes a commission to come out with the truth. I see. Yes. So in returning <clears throat> the banks of, of those who supposedly were wrongfully uh, taken over, is the NDC trying to return Unibank to Dr. Dufour? Is that why you are doing that? Oh, I was saying that, Dr. Dufour. My because Dr. Was, Dufour is a member of the party. Yeah, but Dr. Ndung has also complained. Mm -hmm. Right. Dr. Ndung has also complained. Right. right. Yes. Are you trying to return? And, there are, and, and I don't want to, you know, but the word is out there that some of the other owners, you know, were, you know, from the MPP. Right. So why is that Dr. Dufour? I, yeah, well, I, well, I am because it is his party that is talking about this. Uh, and I'm saying that when the commission sits, they are not going to talk to Dr. Dufour alone. Uh -huh. They are going to talk to him. It's, they are going to talk to other banks that were close, whose owners... Is your answer know, to my question no? What? No, in the sense of In what? the sense that you are not doing this so that you can return Dr. Dufour's uh, bank, bank. I'm and, saying Dr. Dufour is not the only one who has lost his investment. Dr. Dr. Dufour is the only one also who is a member of the NDC. And so I'm asking... But if, that's if the way to formulate policies. I know Dr. Dufour was my boss, right? Uh -huh. And he would have been implementing, you know, the... Uh, he implemented several policies mm -hmm. and arrests, yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that, no, it's, I, I don't want to personalize the issue. I see. You know, because, one, if you set up that commission, right, what about the depositors who lost their money? They are not the embodiment of Dr. Dufour. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And Dr. Dufour is a Ghanaian, and he has the right, whether it's his party or not, you know, to, you know, to ask for grievance, uh, to a resolution of a, for his grievances to be sorted out. I see. But I'm saying, let me put it on record, I'm saying that, you know, I believe strongly that the normal banks that were closed down, including microfinance, you mm -hmm. know, remember, and all, yeah. and all those things, you can't say all of them are NDC banks. And therefore, you cannot, for the, for the purpose of doing that, say, Dr. Dufour is part of it. He's been NDC, everybody knows. <laughs> that is being, yeah, that is fair fair point. We know the situation around the <clears throat> syndicated loan, uh, whether it is because we are not getting money on the market or it's because we have taken the decision to use our own money in buying the cocoa from the farmers. We have a situation on hand which you may or may not inherit. I want to hear your thoughts about the cocoa industry and how you plan to make it better. There's an American expression which is global. <clears throat> if it ain't broke, why fix it? If it ain't broke, why fix it? If you have been relying on the same source for 32 years, and I can tell you that at a point when I was in office, Cocoa Board was borrowing at a cheaper interest rate than the government. The government is borrowing. Labor plus 2 3%. Right. So, no, if you tell Ghanaians the true story, <laughs> 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. They said that it's a true story. It's not because there's but some, what, what, you know. what do you think it could be? At a point, what? What, what? I mean, what do you think the situation could be? Oh, Why we may not be? Oh, the IMF report says that Cocoa Body is owing. And part of the debt has even been put on government. So they can't go back to the same people and borrow. Mm. That's one. Two, you know, we sold forward. Right, also in the report. We sold forward. We have to supply. And instead of 900 and the million that is hit, we'll be lucky to get 600,000 due to Dumso. Sorry, I said Dumso. <laughs> due to Galamse and mm -hmm. other things, which has devastated the the farms. We don't have time. I would have showed you the picture. I went to my grandfather's school farm. Mm. And it's all gone. I see. Because, I was, because of Galamse. Yes. Mm. In fact, the, the pond where I used to, you know, fetch water, swim, learn to swim, and all those sort of things. I don't swim anyway. Right. The river that was flowing, you could see the pebbles. Mm. In those days, and I read. Right. Today is milky. There were ponds. I see. It's not even flowing. They were turning to about four or five ponds. I see. Yes. I, and so know, I'm saying that the problem with the cocoa sector is not a question of strategy. You know, some big strategy about, you know, we having found a very good way, a better way of borrowing. If you have a better way of borrowing, why does the government continue to rely on only treasure bills? Why don't we go to that market, you know, so that we can do, use the same market to, to finance, you know, uh, uh, the government? Thank you so much for sitting with us today. You're welcome. Seth Tekwe is former finance minister. We have been talking about the economy and the plans the NDC has for this country. This is Hot Issues. I'm Kemeni Amana. I'll see you same time next week. Bye-bye.